Lisa Saylor, School Psychologist and Coordinator for the Educational Assessment Team. I'm here to talk to you today about consultations. Consultations are just one of the specialized services that we provide. Consultation is an opportunity for the student's teaching team to seek guidance from another professional or multiple professionals regarding concerns that the teaching team, including the parent, may have about the student's educational performance. There are a variety of areas that we can provide educational consultation including vision, hearing, academic, language, communication, behavior, and social emotional. For example, we can provide consultation on whether or not a student's eye condition should be further explored through what is called a functional vision assessment to determine the student's ability to use vision to perform routine school tasks or to discuss whether the student may need an orientation and mobility assessment to determine the student's ability to safely travel and navigate their school environment. Both our teacher of the visually impaired and our certified orientation mobility specialist would be involved in this type of a request. Our educational audiologist can review the student's audiogram or other medical results related to the student's hearing status to help the teaching team understand these results and identify if a functional listening assessment may be warranted for making educational decisions about instruction, accommodations, assistive technology, or just to understand how the student interacts with their learning environment. Depending on the concerns being raised by the student's teaching team, our school psychologist and or speech pathologist may be involved. In these situations, one of these professionals may complete a couple of structured observations in a variety of classroom settings across different times of day and different days of the week to gain insight into the areas that the student may be struggling and those in which the student excels. It is also common for the professionals involved to interview the student's teacher and parents and, if applicable, other related student personnel to further understand the student's performance across multiple environments with a variety of individuals. Recommendations or suggestions are shared with the school district and when appropriate, these are documented in a written report that can be shared with the student's teaching team and parents. At times, additional testing is recommended as an outcome of the consultation. By bringing in another set of eyes for, from our team's vast expertise and experience, our consultations are a beneficial and efficient service for school districts to consider when the teaching team and our parents are not sure what steps to take with supporting a student's educational needs. I speak for everyone on the assessment team when I say, we serve so students can be successful.
I'm Lisa Saylor, School Psychologist and Coordinator for the Educational Assessment Team. I'm here to talk to you today about consultations. Consultations are just one of the specialized services that we provide. Consultation is an opportunity for the student's teaching team to seek guidance from another professional or multiple professionals regarding concerns that the teaching team, including the parent, may have about the student's educational performance. There are a variety of areas that we can provide educational consultation including vision, hearing, academic, language, communication, behavior, and social emotional. For example, we can provide consultation on whether or not a student's eye condition should be further explored through what is called a functional vision assessment to determine the student's ability to use vision to perform routine school tasks or to discuss whether the student may need an orientation and mobility assessment to determine the student's ability to safely travel and navigate their school environment. Both our teacher of the visually impaired and our certified orientation mobility specialist would be involved in this type of a request. Our educational audiologist can review the student's audiogram or other medical results related to the student's hearing status to help the teaching team understand these results and identify if a functional listening assessment may be warranted for making educational decisions about instruction, accommodations, assistive technology, or just to understand how the student interacts with their learning environment. Depending on the concerns being raised by the student's teaching team, our school psychologist and or speech pathologist may be involved. In these situations, one of these professionals may complete a couple of structured observations in a variety of classroom settings across different times of day and different days of the week to gain insight into the areas that the student may be struggling and those in which the student excels. It is also common for the professionals involved to interview the student's teacher and parents and, if applicable, other related student personnel to further understand the student's performance across multiple environments with a variety of individuals. Recommendations or suggestions are shared with the school district and when appropriate, these are documented in a written report that can be shared with the student's teaching team and parents. At times, additional testing is recommended as an outcome of the consultation. By bringing in another set of eyes for, from our team's vast expertise and experience, our consultations are a beneficial and efficient service for school districts to consider when the teaching team and our parents are not sure what steps to take with supporting a student's educational needs. I speak for everyone on the assessment team when I say, we serve so students can be successful. Hi, my name is Hallie Greenfield and I'm the Orientation and Mobility Specialist, O&M, with the MCESC Educational Assessment Team. In a nutshell, orientation means knowing where you are within the environment and mobility means how you navigate through that environment. An O&M assessment includes a review of records such as medical and vision, both current and past, participation in programs such as early intervention, a history of previous vision and or O&M assessments, and current services that the child may be receiving, just to name a few. Information is also gathered through informally interviewing the parent or guardian, teacher, staff, and or any service providers who might be working with that child. The O&M assessment typically occurs within the child's current school building, but on some occasions, the child is brought here to the regional center in order to be assessed. The O&M assessment includes, but is not limited to, observing the child navigating within their classroom, walking in the school building, mostly to pertinent areas where they travel to regularly, going outside on school grounds, and using the playground equipment, weather permitting. The child is asked to participate in one or more visual scanning, spotting, and tracking activities, such as playing with a high contrast ball and or perhaps playing a game of I Spy when walking in the hallways. The child is also observed walking up and down stairs if they're available and executing surface changes both indoors and outdoors, as well as dealing with what we call light-based transitions. 
Depending on the child's vision, vision diagnosis, or vision diagnoses, I may also want to assess the child in terms of need for a pre-cane device, a long cane, and or an identification cane for the visually impaired. Other O&M tools that may be tried include distance viewing devices such as a monocular, as well as apps for a cell phone and or a tablet. Unlike other assessments through the educational assessment team, you may see a copy of a form called Request for Parental Permission for Community Orientation and Mobility Evaluation. This form allows me to take the child off campus in order to complete part of the O&M assessment in a residential and or a business area. At those times, the child will be asked to travel to a destination or destinations, execute surface changes, traverse sidewalks as well as other grounds if available, and to cross streets at stop sign controlled intersections. Depending on the age of the child, the assessment may also take place in a business area where light controlled intersections are present. The child will be asked to cross the street at those lights several times. Please know that the child is very closely supervised by me and assistance is given as needed. The community portion of the O&M assessment is important, but especially so for those children that are approaching transition age or are transition age. After I complete the O&M assessment, a report will be generated for the school team, including the parent or guardian, to consider the identified educational needs and implications for instruction and progress monitoring. I look forward to meeting your child or your student and working with the team through the O&M evaluation process.